Kesa. High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, Pico, Maninko, Oliver Yashil, you make winning. Use the word undisputed. The thrill of victory again and again for Clarendon College this season. The kings of the land. One done. Of that, it's true. The interscholastic Olivia Shield winners once again. They are the best in the country. Yeah, I have a feeling Clarendon College fans won't get tired of hearing that. They are now six-time Olivia Shield winners as the men from Chapleton put on a clinic to beat Manning Cup champions Mona High by four goals to nil at the National Stadium in Kingston on Wednesday. After a 10 start, schoolboy football's leading marksman Kaim Dixon opened the scoring in the 35th minute. After that, it was smooth sailing for the Lenny Teacher High coach team with Christopher Hall netting a double and DeAndre Gallimore getting the other to complete the Costa Cup Olivia Shield double for the second time in as many seasons. Here's delighted Lenny Hyde. It's going to work pretty, pretty hard this season for this. The boys wanted it most. And I told you before, about seven of them is leaving this year. So they were hell-bent on defending the Olivia Sheen. And you see what they did tonight. We didn't start out well in the first half, but as the game went on, we gradually picked up and start past the ball and the movement. They enjoyed it tonight. That's what I told them. Just go out there and enjoy the game. Meanwhile, Mona High's technical director, Craig Butler, lamented his team's missed opportunities. It was about running out of gas. It was about not taking any chances. We, got, we, we, we won the ball, we made our chances, we got our chances, we didn't score. And when you don't score like that and you're pressing like that, sooner or later, you're going to break down. And um, for me, I think the boys played well. Yeah, but I think Clarendon College today was the better team on the field. I'm going to give them their props and show them their respect. Yeah, so joining us on set is our in-house football analyst and almost prediction guru, Lige Williams. Uh, Lige, a clinical performance by Clarendon College and uh, pretty much like many other performances we've seen from them all season. Yeah, it's unfortunate that the one time that they didn't produce that performance was, you know, I can say maybe at my expense because I would have been perfect on the season, but they give some Ricardo something to gloat about. But in terms of the... The game on the day, they, they were brilliant, you know. I, it's quite unfortunate I didn't get to come on the show and speak about their the Costa Cup final performance because in terms of the first 45 minutes of that game, I think if we put it to scale and put it in context in terms of, you know, the, the, the group level and the occasion, if you match all of that up, that's one of the best performances of football I've seen in a final in my personal life, my short life so far. So, and, and I think they came and they repeated that in the second half against Mona yesterday. They were absolutely fantastic. Lenny Hyde mentioned players that were leaving, and those were, I think, some of the players that really stood out. Christopher Hull, one, one of the match, I think he was fantastic. Kahim Dixon, what more can you say? He's as inevitable as inevitable comes um, as a striker. 32 goals on the season and had seven goals taken away from him. So good, you know. I, I think the midfield came to the party also. I have to talk about Malachi Douglas, their captain for two straight seasons and such success under him. But, you know, I, you know I, was, I was speaking to Dwight Jeremiah, the analyst on the night, and I, I had to mention, I, I personally wanted Theon Kupi to get the man of the match. And, you know, because I think if you, if you know me personally, if you know me personally, I, I've given extra lessons before on how important the defensive midfield position is in football. I actually think it's the most important position on a football field. And I think we were given a stunning example of how that position should be played last night by Theon Kupi against Mona High. He was fantastic in terms of his tempo, breaking up play, knowing when to progress the ball, knowing when to slow things down. And I think that really just exemplifies his understanding of the game, really just exemplifies what we've grown accustomed to seeing from this Clarendon team. And I, I think if we're going to really rank this Clarendon team in terms of what we've seen in this century at least, I think it's really known that St. George's team of the, the late 2000s and early 2010s in terms of the style and pinache that they play with along, as, along with the success that we, that we have to put them right up there with that team. Yeah, really, really kings of schoolboy football here in Jamaica. We listened to the Mona 
high head coach. He spoke about the missed chances, not taking the chances. Do you think and do you agree with him that that costed Mono the game? Yeah, I think so because, yes, I, I agree. When, when I mentioned Klein and I said that it was really their second half performance, I think in the first half, the game was really tight. Kaim Dixon scored, you know, with 10 minutes or so to go in the first half. Mona had a couple of half-decent chances as well. And when a team scores first or equalizes or even brings the game within one, the game state automatically changes. Clarendon would start to play differently. We saw that in their game against Glenmuir. I think we all have come to acknowledge that Clarendon is a better team than Glenmuir. But things happened in that first game in the Champions Cup that really changed the game state, you know. Firstly, um, Glenmuir getting that equalizer against the run of play, then the red card. These things can change the mentality and how a team wants to play. Momentum is, is, is one of the most important things in any sport, much less football. So we, we, we've seen that that can happen and Mona just didn't get the rub of the green. And as Craig Butler mentioned, if you then have to open up to a try and get back into the game, uh, this Clarendon team is about as hard to play against as probably any team in the country. Yeah, and having said all of that, um, I would suggest as well that the goalkeeping of Akeem Bernard really let Mona hide on because I looked at those goals and I think to myself, maybe three of those four goals with better quality goalkeeping wouldn't have been. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you, but I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I, I like to go to the root of issues. Mm. And I think that, say for instance, that Christopher Hull chance. Uh, I don't like how Mona were, were necessarily um, situated in the box. Yes, he should have done better, of course, but it's cause and effect with certain things. I, I do think that Mona allowed Clarendon College to get into too many good areas, and I think that even if those mistakes weren't made, yes, I'm saying that there are mistakes, you know, but even if those mistakes weren't made, more things would have continued to happen, and they would have conceded the goals by the law of averages regardless. So. I'm not going to cow down on his performance too much. But his three goals, though, <laughs> his yeah. three goals that he probably really should have saved. And I understand the point that you're making, right? And sometimes you are right in situations like that. But we've seen many football games where teams have a plethora of chances and they don't score. And with brilliant goalkeeping, it is, it is completely different. And sometimes you never know. If it's 1-0 going into... 80 minutes as opposed to 4-0, it's, it's completely different. But I also do understand the point that you're making and I'm not taking you on too much on this because the truth is I also believe that Clarendon College is by some distance the better team. Yeah, yeah I have to agree with you for, for <laughs> once, Ricardo. But, but what makes this team so, so special? Because it's not only just the season. They've been dominating for quite some time. So I want to start saying it's in their DNA. It's a part of their culture, winning. And, and, and you would have to be right. Winning, winning is a skill. People don't like to say that, but being able to win consistently is a skill yeah. in any sport, in, in any um, medium that you want to put it in. And I, I think if you look at it even deeper, I think tactically, it, it's, it's, it's not that they are the most pure tactical team in schoolboy football. I, I, I do think that if you speak about um, specifics tactically, I, I'll give the edge to maybe a Jamaica College or maybe a Glenmuir as we saw, but in terms of their understanding of the game, understanding of what Lenny Hyde wants to accomplish, it's second to none, maybe only to, as I mentioned, that George's team, yeah. late 2000s, early 2010s. And, this Clarendon team, in terms of how intelligent the players are, their understanding of space, most importantly, I think that's what really sets them apart from uh, every team, really. Yeah, and that understanding comes over a number of years, right? Yeah. Because Lenny Hyde spoke about seven players who are going to be leaving this season. When you think about it, their, their front three, Hull, Malachi Douglas, Kahim Dixon, were there three seasons ago yep. when they won, for example, the Champions Cup. Kaim Dixon scored in a Champions Cup final um, after he scored in a semi-final. So they are generally brought into the Clarendon College system quite early and coached in a particular system. Craig Butler loves to talk about a way of playing and yeah, a system, system of playing. Clarendon College has that and I think it's a large part of why they continue to have success because your leading players move out but those who are coming in look at the centre-back position um, we've sang the praises of Nashon Bolt, Bolt. Yeah. he is out on a red card 
comes to comes in and it's like it's like, like city that's why nothing. are you he this was amazing and you're like this guy <laughs> wouldn't have gotten a chance to play had it not been for the red and, card and i actually think that he, his performances over the last two games has shown that he's actually probably a better passer than bolt that's as well which i was waiting for this because i was he, waiting he was, for this he was genuinely fantastic his passes out to the right back to the right wing they were european esque i was watching the game with my friends in the stands and where some passes that you know you don't see a lot of schoolboys attempt even Devante Hodges who is a good ball playing center back I was like what is going on here how is this guy not playing all yeah, season that's why I use the city example at the top of the show because of how deep the team is the squad mm -hmm. is sometimes even when the junior players step up as you said players who you would not have expected to play when they step up it's as if they belong there all along yeah. and I think it's a culture yeah, yeah. it's a pity that Lige can't say Arsenal in that regard. I mean, Arsenal has one of the most distinct ways of playing. No, 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 in terms football. of players stepping leaving on. and then others stepping in and still getting the same S quality. S S Sir Lance, of I know you, Sir Lance, you've been around longer than Ricardo. So and I, we're you talking have, about you, now. You, you'll have to educate him. And no, 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 we're the, not talking the about Arsenal, the past. I can speak up. We're talking about now. We have the second youngest team in the Premier League. There is no reason that you can indicate that. You know what we're talking about? Super, <laughs> but I'm not going to do this. I'm not, yeah, not, I'm not now, I'm not, not here. Take, I'm not going to take the draw Not now, not here. TV. I'm going to wrap this segment. <laughs> please, please, Producer right. says it's time for a break. We have to take a break. It's getting too hot. <laughs> But they never will know until the whistle blows around. Come enjoy the show. Isa, schoolboy football. Yo, Isa. My schoolboy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right then, Pico, Manning Cup. Only for your shield, you make willing cup. We watch the Champions Cup. Ben Francis, what a cup which team are win the championship this season.